Welcome to a Corel Draw Basics tutorial. I'm going to be going over these things listed here in this video. It's just something super simple to show you the basics to get you started in Corel Draw. If you're brand new to Corel Draw and you've loaded it up for the first time, chances are you're going to need to uh, adjust some general settings. So go to Tools, then Options, Tools again, and make sure this zoom relative one to one and center mouse when zooming is checked um, that will help you navigate around your workspace a lot easier with the zoom wheel and uh, onto canvas basics whatever project you're working on you want to make sure that the units reflect the product that you're going to be designing okay so if you're designing business cards uh, you could go up here and change it to business cards and the canvas will change to a three and a half by two. That's a standard business card. And you can change your units to millimeters if needed. I'm gonna go back to inches. Then you could also go to a letter, eight and a half by 11. That's a simple piece of paper. Um, if you're working on signs, like a four by eight, you can go to feet and you could change your dimensions up here. I'm going to show you how to save this. If we go to edit this list, we can go to feet, 4x8. Everything's already set to what I had it originally, and let's save. And then we could do a 4x8 right here. If we press OK, um, now we have it in our template list up here, right there. And the top, what is this? The top six are, are going to be your most recently used templates. Let me go back to t-shirt. So those are your canvas basics. Onto colors, if I left click a tile, it will change the fill color. If I right click, it will change the outline of the object that I have selected. Um, if I go to this little tile, colorless tile right here with the red line through it, if I right click, it takes away the color. Same thing with the left click. And now I just have an invisible object. If you only have one color palette on your right hand side, chances are it's just a plain CMYK. Um, if you wanna add RGB like these colors up here or Pantone colors, just go to window, color palettes, palettes. And over here, you can, if these are closed, you can extend these and whatever you check right here will pop up. So since I don't have a Pantone palette, I'm gonna add that. So I go to process right here, Pantone, go to Pantone plus or previous versions. I'm gonna go to previous versions and I'm just gonna add process coded right here. Check that and let's exit. And now I have a Pantone palette right here. Um, you might have to guess which ones are which because chances are this might be the wrong palette. See, I, I don't really want this palette. There's not even a white in here. I guess there is right there, but I'm gonna get rid of that. For RGB colors, you're gonna wanna use that with digital media, anything that's gonna be looked at on a screen. For CMYK, you're gonna wanna use those colors for signage, printing, anything that has to do with ink through a printer or um, big machines like that. And for Pantone colors, you're gonna wanna use that for t-shirts, the, the actual ink for t-shirts. For tools and shapes, you're gonna need to experiment a lot with these tools over here and get really familiar with them. I'm not gonna go over every single one, but just for the time being, uh, the rectangle tool. If I click it, you see how my mouse change is to a rectangle. If I click and drag, it creates a rectangle. If I click and drag again, it continues to create a rectangle. Now, if I wanna go back to click this rectangle, I can't just click and drag because I'm gonna just create another rectangle. I'm gonna have to go back to the pick tool and then I can click the rectangle and move it around. With the shift click, if I have one item selected and I hold shift and I click another item, now I have both of them selected. If I continue to hold shift and click more items, I can select all of these items at once. Now, if I click off of them, it's gonna deselect everything and then I go back to selecting one at a time. 
if I alt click, um, that selects an item below the current item you, you have selected. So for example, let's change this color to green and let's change this color to orange. So the green is above the orange. Now if I alt, hold alt and I click, it's gonna select the orange behind the green. Okay, so if I'm trying to select the orange, it's only letting me select the green because it's on top. If I hold alt, I select again and it lets me select orange. Same thing with a power clip. If you have something power clipped within something else, so let's take this green, power clip inside, choose the orange. If I hold alt and click, I can edit the item within the power clip. For shift dragging, if I have an object selected and I want to keep it on this line right here, instead of me just dragging and trying to eyeball where it's at, if I go back and I click, I drag, if I hold shift, it will stay on that same line. Same thing vertically, if I go up with it, it's going to stay wherever it originally was. Um, on that same vertical axis and the same horizontal axis All right different shortcuts that are going to be very useful are C E P L R and T so if I press Click an object like for example this basics It's grouped together if I press P it's gonna center horizontally and vertically to my canvas Just like that now, if I have multiple objects selected, just like this square and the basics, if I press C, it's gonna center them horizontally. If I press E, it's gonna center them vertically. If I press T, it's gonna bring uh, the objects to the very top of each other. If I press B, it's gonna bring it to the bottom. If I press L, it's gonna bring it to the left. And if I press R, it's gonna bring it to the right. Now, the object you're wanting to center it to, you're gonna to have to select that last. If I want all of these objects centered to the basics, I'm gonna select basics last. So I'm holding shift, I select basics last, and then I press E. And it has centered all of them to, this, to the middle of basics. If I select all of these squares, and then I select basics last, if I press C, it's gonna bring them all to the center. And if I press E again, it's gonna group them all right here in the middle, just like that. For duplicating, if you have an object or a text that you want to duplicate, you click, drag, and you right click. And boom, it has it duplicated. You could do the same thing with multiple objects. So say I select both of these, and I drag away, if I right click, then I let go, it's duplicated and you can do this endlessly. For grouping, say I have a design that incorporates multiple objects, and I wanna be able to select all the objects at the same time without having to shift click or highlight everything together. Um, what I can do is I can group them together. So for example, if I click this, it only selects the basics. If I click this, it only selects the square. If I select both of them, and then if I right click and group together, now, whenever I select one, it selects both of them and I can move them around together. If I right click and I ungroup, it breaks them apart. All right, and that's gonna wrap up the basics of this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to give me a like and subscribe. Also, go check out the other tutorials I have. It goes more in depth with different skills and different tools within Corel Draw. And I appreciate you watching. Bye.